Hi everybody, this is Phil Haloka from Complete Captive Management Services. And today we're gonna to talk about tax. Something that doesn't get enough time when an employer is looking to vet out a captive solution. So, we're gonna break it down into three categories. State and domicile tax kick off the conversation today. So, in order to really appreciate the differences of a tax schedule for captives, you gotta break it down into two different silos. If you're a reinsurance captive, the tax schedule looks like this. If you're a direct rider captive, it's gonna look like this. Now, you don't have to be either or. If you're a single parent captive, you could be in both areas, but for our conversation today, we're gonna to assume that this captive is just doing reinsurance work and this solution is just doing direct rider work. So, if you're a reinsurance captive, AKA a fronted captive, the tax schedule looks like this. So you're gonna have an admitted carrier that is functioning in a fronting capacity which means the members of this captive is gonna receive a policy from an admitted insurance company. And the duty of the captive is to reinsure that commercial policy. That carrier is called an admitted carrier. And that means that it is admitted to do insurance work, i.e. issue a policy within a specific state. So if I'm admitted to do business in Colorado, that means I'm admitted in Colorado. That admittance has a cost. State premium tax is a tax calculated based on the collected premium. And that premium tax is roughly two to four something percent and Hawaii is the largest tax jurisdiction for state premium tax. So if you're a fronted captive, your, re your fronting carrier is going to pass through that state premium tax. That tax collected is gonna be expressed on the border row report. So if you're a Colorado insured business, and you're in a group captive, you are going to be paying the Colorado state premium tax. If that Colorado state premium tax is 2%, you wanna make sure that the border row report is expressing a 2% premium tax load, okay? So it's important that you understand where the cost of that premium tax is expressed the border row report. The captive will also pay a domicile tax. The domicile tax is calculated from the seeded premium that is collected and held by the fronting carrier. Because remember, if you're in a group captive that's fronted, the insured is paying their premiums on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis those premiums are held by the carrier, not by the captive. So the domicile is gonna charge a premium tax based on seeded premiums held by the carrier. And that tax is generally two tenths to maybe a half, a fifth of a percent expressed here. Now, these taxes, the domicile tax, are subject to maximums and minimums. So if you're a really large group captive, you may be subject to the maximum, which is good, but not so good is if you're a small captive, you're subject to the minimum tax, which is usually $5,000. So in this example, let's assume that the group captive is collecting a million dollars. The state premium tax is 2%, which is 20 grand. The domicile premium tax, 
Let's assume it's two tenths of a percent, but it's but there's a minimum, and that minimum is five thousand dollars. So the domicile is going to collect five thousand of premium tax. The state's going to collect twenty thousand, leaving the captive's embedded tax expense at two and a half percent. So if you remember from prior videos, startup group captives have an overweight on certain expenses, this is one of them. Okay, if you're a direct writer captive, you are classed as a non-admitted carrier in states in which the captive is not domiciled. Simply put, if you're a Utah domiciled captive and you want to issue a policy in Colorado, that Colorado issued policy is considered being received by a non-admitted carrier because you're a Utah insurance company, not a Colorado insurance company. So non-admitted non -admitted carriers will not pay state premium tax in one situation. And that situation is if the captive is domiciled in Utah and the insured business is also registered in Utah, that means that business and that captive do not pay any state premium tax. They just pay captive domicile tax. That's expressed here. However, if your captive is in Utah and your business is in Colorado, you're gonna have to pay a Colorado non-admittance tax. So your Utah captive will have an added domicile tax expense, and that tax expense is generally 2.5% of the premium. So assuming that your captive is collecting a million dollars, your tax load is more than the group captive. Okay. Now, it's very important during the formation process that if you're a single parent captive and your business is, in, is registered within a captive domicile, there's great value in registering your captive in the same state as your business. That value is right here. That's why it's so very important to engage the right service providers that understand this value when they consult with a future captive owner. So I hope this was helpful. Next week, we're going to talk about federal income tax, which, was, which is equally exciting. So until then, have a good week. Bye now.